It is not that often that I get to share with you guys a brand new GeForce GTX something 80, but this is it. This is the GTX 780, the new flagship card in at least their numbered series of single GPU graphics cards. And it is all about, well, it's all about looks. It's all about performance. It's all about power consumption. It's all about features. It's basically all about all of those things. So let's start with the card physically. If you've ever seen a GTX Titan, the GTX 780 is going to look pretty familiar to you. It uses the same gorgeous aluminum cooler. You can actually see through the polycarbonate window the aluminum fins. It has the same quiet sound dampened fan, but get this guys, it comes with a new fan profile that actually prevents it from ramping up and ramping down and keeps it much more level sounding in addition to being quiet. It has a PCI Express 3.0 interface, uses an 8-pin and 6-pin PCIe connector, has the same illuminated GeForce GTX logo on the top that you can adjust the brightness and actually have pulsating as well through the control panel tools available from the board partners, and supports three-way and four-way, and I suppose also two-way SLI with two SLI connectors up at the top. The card exhausts air not only from the front, but also from the back, although mostly out the rear of your case, and has DisplayPort, HDMI, and dual DVI connectors, meaning you have full support for NVIDIA 3D Vision Surround with an additional auxiliary display. Spec-wise, the 780 comes in and absolutely curb stomps the 680. It has 50% more CUDA cores, 50% more memory with three gigs, which is gonna make it much more suitable for high resolution gaming, particularly in surround and at 4K resolutions, and 50% wider bus on the memory as well. So it uses a 384-bit bus as opposed to a 256-bit bus. That means more memory, more bandwidth to the memory, more CUDA cores, and just generally more performance in every possible way. I mean, it's like, it's like, and it just takes its place like that. See, 680, gone. It's rolling with the Titan. Now, speaking of things that the GTX 780 comes in and rolls over, there's the 7970 gigahertz edition. Now, it seems like a bit of an unfair comparison because the 780 will be significantly more expensive than the 7970 gigahertz edition, but the reality of it is, let me just put that over there. What else were they supposed to compare it to? Because there isn't anything equivalent to the 780, much like there wasn't anything equivalent to the Titan, and technologically they are very similar. The GTX 780 also features GPU Boost 2. Now GPU Boost 2 takes the old GPU Boost, which was on the 680, which adjusted your GPU clock speeds and voltages to overclock your card according to a power threshold. GPU Boost 2 adds temperature to the mix. So now you can do any number of things. You can set a target temperature for your card. You can go, uh, the default is 80. Okay, I'm comfortable with 70. I want my card to stay really cool. Or you can say, I'm comfortable with 90 degrees and set it to that. And the card will amp up its clock speed, amp up its fan speed, and amp up the voltage in order to meet whatever requirements you have. That means it's great for liquid cooling because all you do is throw a water block on it, set all the sliders to max, and the card will overclock itself as high as it can go all the time, making it extremely fast. Now, this is only sort of new, because SLI isn't new, taking multiple graphics cards, running them together for more performance, and NVIDIA's frame rating smoothing technology is also not new, but it's being talked about a lot more lately. So you're gonna see a graph overlaid here of what NVIDIA figures you'll get in terms of scaling moving to two GTX 780s, but I wanna talk a little bit about frame latency or frame rating or any number of different things, frame smoothness. So it used to be the way we benchmarked graphics cards was we looked at how many frames the engine called for, okay? Now, we're actually looking at it a different way. So particularly a few review sites such as PC Per and Hardware Canucks are looking instead at the frames that actually get displayed to the end user. And particularly for dual graphics card setups, NVIDIA is dominating the charts. Not necessarily in terms of what Fraps might report, but in terms of how many frames are actually getting to the display and to the end user. Next up is the GeForce experience. 
And to make my point, I'm not going to touch the card at all because it's not about the 780, it's about this coming out of beta and becoming part of the NVIDIA drivers. So the GeForce Experience, oh, I almost touched the card. The GeForce Experience optimizes your gameplay according to the game, so it'll suggest settings for you. It'll help you download the latest drivers, particularly new game titles that drop. Uh, don't necessarily have an optimized driver until like that day or even like the next day. So. The GeForce experience will check and make sure and see if there's an optimized driver for you and make sure that you've got it without really any intervention. Because a lot of gamers, they want to get the new game, they want to play the game. They don't think about, oh, maybe I'll download some software updates before I play my game. GeForce experience looks to mitigate that. They're also adding some really cool functionality with Shadow Play. Okay, I'm going to touch the card now. Because it uses the built-in H.264 encoder in your GeForce graphics card to automatically record the last 20 minutes of gameplay. And it does this with only about a 5% performance hit according to the numbers I've seen, which is very cool because that's a lot less than Fraps and because it's encoding in H.264, the files are much smaller than the uncompressed files that are generated by Fraps. It looks like there's going to be a manual mode button as well, so it can be up to 20 minutes of, of whatever's going on in auto mode or you can manually record. And I mean, who knows, I mean, in the future, if Nvidia can figure out how to use this technology for guys like game streamers, the days of dedicated capture cards might just be gone. So in a nutshell, the GTX 780 from NVIDIA is the second fastest single GPU graphics card on the market. And normally when I'd say something like that about a 780, it would be because maybe, you know, the competitor had a faster card. But in this case, NVIDIA now has the top spot and the second spot for single GPU graphics cards locked up very, very nicely. And you no longer have to pay a huge premium to get a GK110 GPU because you can get one of these still at a premium, just a smaller one. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.